Welcome back to the final part of our set review for Opus 13. We're going to talk about the light, dark, and multicolor cards, and I'm joined, as always, by Travis Pfeiffer. Travis, how are you doing? Hello, Alex. Pleasure to be here. Uh, very appropriate we're reviewing Final Fantasy today. I ran to the store to get some milk earlier, and I'm wearing this awesome shirt that says White Mage Academy on it. And when I was there checking out, uh, the clerk who rang me out was like, that's such a cool shirt. Are you a white mage? He's like, I play white mage main in 14. I was like, oh, yeah, I do, too. And we're actually on the same data center. So he's like, hold on. And he scribbled down his character name. He was like, here, friend me when you get on the game. So <laughs> made a new friend today. That's incredible. And guess what? I'm also a white mage main. So <laughs> there you go. He lives <laughs> in the house. Awesome. So we're going to get right to it. Lots of cards to talk about. Uh, and the first one, we're going to do our light and dark uh, they're very similar so i'll set up the first one and then we'll we'll talk about them uh, so this is materia which is a one cp light forward 2000 power uh, from dissidia final fantasy job goddess and she reads you can play two or more light characters onto the field now i, I want to stop there because yeah. my assumption was that she's just like Cosmos and Chaos. You can play two or more light characters onto the field, but those cards specify you can play them onto the field if you already control a light or dark forward. These cards do not, which means if you have a light forward out or light character out, you can't actually play Materia, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah. But let's move on from there. So, but if you play her first, you can then play another light card. Okay, so when Materia enters the field, you may pay X. When you do so, search for one light forward of cost X and play it onto the field. Now, that's so, so far, uh, um, Spiritus is going to have the exact same cost and effect and everything, but for dark forwards. When a light forward other than Materia you control is put from the field to the break zone, draw one card. This effect will only trigger once per turn. So, this is a legend, um, and it's a lot of work, but it's also very strong. Uh, the, the ability to directly tutor a card from your deck onto the field at any point is pretty good, uh, especially in dark. <laughs> Not as good in light, but it is still good in light. And the bonus effect is also very good. Um, so you are losing a card from hand, you are paying one CP, but you're not paying uh, the card from hand that you're taking from your deck. So you, there's actually like a net gain compared to playing other cards uh, typically. So that's all very good. Being able to search a light card and play it directly, that those are harder to find typically in FFTCG and get them onto the field. So this is all good. And then you have the added bonus of if it breaks uh, or whatever, then you can draw a card and that's good too. And I think that that is semi-likely because I don't think anyone's gonna waste anything on Materia. However, there are lots of bonus effects that will be able to take out Materia first. But if your opponent does use removal on her, they're gonna probably lose a lot of CP advantage there. So uh, I don't like this one that much. I like the I like the Spiritus one a lot more, but I do think that this will always have a place because uh, again, that effect of just grabbing something from your deck directly and being able to process whatever game plan you have uh, can't be underrated. I appreciate what they were trying to do with these, but I wonder if they kind of like over-designed it. And what I mean by that is, like you said, it's really awkward that this has to be the first light card. You know, what if you draw your other light card first? What if you draw Cosmos early? You know, now granted Cosmos is gonna let you filter that, but like if you draw your other, I don't know. So uh, I don't know if that was necessary to put that on there. I guess we'll see. Like you said, the pay and search, pull it right from your deck plate to the field. That's undeniably one of the strongest effects you can have in the game. However, as we also know, I too like Spiritus more because there's just not a lot of great light forwards that people are wanting to play. And like, technically this would be cool in Warriors of Light that I could go fetch Refia, but that deck is already so bogged down with light characters. I don't want to add even more, you know, I'll never be able to pay anything from hand. And then the thing is too, while the additional effect is neat, she's so weak at 2000 power. Like you said, there's some cards that just have bonus effects. Uh, do something 2K, boom, you can knock her out first and completely negate that bonus. So I don't know, I haven't seen them once uh, this weekend. And as a heads up, like the set released globally or you know everywhere besides na this past weekend so i've seen a lot of these multi-element cards and such getting played i haven't seen materia or spiritus once yet i would like to see them do something but i think for once in a while we got a light and dark card that aren't just going to go crazy in the meta as a matter of fact no one may use these yeah but at the same time if you happen to get a cheap play set of them then hold on to them you're going to be yeah. able to make some very fun homebrew decks uh, that you can enjoy casually uh, and then in the future they can only get better with more prints so uh, 
something to keep in mind. All right, so why don't you quickly cover uh, Spiritus, the, the second of the two? Yeah, so Spiritus is basically the same thing. He's a job god. He's a one cost, 2,000 power forward from Dissidia. You can play two or more dark characters onto the field, just like uh, Materia. He has to be the first one. He can't enter if there's already a dark character. When Spiritus enters the field, you may pay X, and you do so, search for a dark forward of the cost X, play it onto the field. And then the only difference is that when a dark forward other than Spiritus you control is put from the field of the break zone, you choose up to one forward and remove it from the game. Likewise, that effect will only trigger once per turn. Most people, again, were like, oh, of course, dark always gets the better effect. Now, some people have made the argument that, well, drawing a card is a more neutral effect, like drawing a card was always good, whereas what if they don't have a forward, then he won't have anyone to remove. Um, but yeah, my opinion pretty much feels the same way about Spiritus. Even though I think he has a stronger exit effect, I still think he's going to suffer from all the same issues. That being said, Dark is universally stronger than Light. So I don't know, maybe there is something here that uh, I'm not seeing. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, like, I can think of like some really crazy decks where like maybe to like you have Geldas or, or you have uh, whatever it is that like gets extra value when it leaves the field and then uh, you get to chain that with him so you're making them like discard uh, and you're moving a forward from the game and it can just get really messy like especially if you have some way to to like mutually like take out a, a forward of theirs and yours or something like uh, with Delita then then there could be some like really cool fun stuff but again we're yeah. in the kind of the casual territory but this yeah. is this is better to like to pull out some really impactful cards out of your deck because there lo there's lots of impactful dark cards uh, not as many impactful light cards yeah. uh, so let us know what you think about these guys I'm very curious uh, awesome art of, of course as well yeah, yeah. absolutely Next up, we have Laswell. Uh, this is a very cool um, art for him. Uh, so he is uh, Job King, which again, uh, they could have gone in a different direction. They didn't, thank you. So he is a fire ice uh, forward multi-element, uh, 8K power, FFBE category. When he enters the field, your opponent discards one card from their hand. So that's fine. Like that's a good, good thing to have, uh, especially since he's a five cost 8K. Uh, but when a fire or ice forward you control attacks, choose one forward your opponent controls and deal it. 3,000 damage. So if you have a bunch of forwards, uh, then they can, if you have three forwards, let's say, uh, you could ping for 9k that turn. Now, maybe that forward's going to need to be dull because otherwise these forwards that you have, if you have three of them, they're probably not that strong. So it's kind of like a, like the, the WAF effect. Um, but you don't have to um, have such a specific build and also um, it's a little bit worse than <laughs> than rain yeah. was but uh i do think that you know like just being able to have a fire ice deck where you already have some ping uh and then that can combo in like something comes in and pings and then something else attacks at the beginning of your attack phase this card is actually a lot stronger than i gave it credit for when i first saw it yeah i agree honestly the entire thing that saves him is the fact that it's any fire or ice forward like if it was just him this card would be totally it'd be worse than his other version um and that's the other thing too is like the the opus 8 laswell is also very good in fire ice because he can keep something down every turn so i don't know if this one is worth playing over that one but again i do like that second effect that your whole board can suddenly ping it at least makes him worth trying out i don't know if he'll ultimately be good also just have to give a shout out to laswell as a character he's one of my favorite characters in brave exvius so always happy to see him get some love love me some last worm all right yeah all right next we have onion knight onion knight is a four cost nine thousand power forward job onion knight when Onion Knight is put from the field into the break zone, you may play one card named Onion Knight from your hand onto the field. You may pay a Fire, a Wind, and remove three card named Onion Knight in the break zone from the game. Choose up to three forwards. Deal them 9,000 damage. So the first time I read that action ability, I was like, oh my god, that's insane, like 9,000 damage on three people. But as I read it again, I was like, oh, actually, that's kind of hard to pay for because you have to have three Onion Knight in the break zone that you then throw out. Onion Knights are like, I don't know, I feel like they've been kind of trying to make them a thing since Opus 1, and they've never really like gotten there taken off, and so I don't know if they're there yet. This card could be really good in the future again as we get more and more Onion Knights, but... I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know if they're quite there yet. So he might be one that, like, in the future, is gonna get really good. 
Yeah, that's a really hard effect to have, but it's very cool in that um, there's no dull symbol. So it is like once you have that achieved, but the number of onion knights you need to include in your deck is seriously going to affect it. If this was a lightning wind card, then this card yeah. would be ready to go. Like there's so many, because then you get the whole lightning wind onion knight right. package. Uh, whereas with this one, I don't think there are any fire onion knights. So you're going to have to run. So. You know, three of these guys, some of the Wind on your Knights, maybe you'd look at the Light one, I don't know. But uh, definitely, uh, too bad it's not Lightning Wind. Yeah, that's kind of weird that they're in such kind of just random colors right now anyway, so I guess we'll see what happens to it. All right, next up we have Cater, which is a 2 CP Fire Wind uh, multi-element forward with 6k power from Type 0 and a Class 0 Cadet, uh, which is always very important. Um, for these guys. When Cater enters the field, select one of the two following actions, choose up to three backups, activate them, choose a uh, one forward, deal at 1k damage for each backup you control. So this is going to be at most a 5k ping, um, which isn't that great, but it does combo with other things uh, and it is cheap to cast, but it also has that backup effect and I think that's obviously going to be pretty awesome just to be able to, to activate three backups, pay for yourself, uh, and then activate one more thing and then you're ready to, to cast more cards, um, which can be important for some other cards that we'll see as well with uh, Type 0. So uh, obviously going to be really good in a, a Type 0 deck and you're not exactly losing out taking out the other caters from your Type 0 deck. And here's where we disagree. So as someone who's been trying to make a Type 0 deck work since I got into the game and has played, I, I built one in Opus 13 and was playing it this weekend. It, it, man, I wish this was a backup because the thing is the new boss monster of type zero, which is nine, depends on the number of cadets you want. So you honestly, I think are more beneficial running the backup cater just because mm -hmm. kind of like in Scions, you just want a backup that has the job cadet. So, and the backup is way more reliable to keep around than than the forward. Even though that backup, its effects are awful, undeniably, but you just want that job cadet on the field. I honestly think this card is fine. It's, you know, above curve. Uh, it more than pays for itself when it comes in. You can do a 5k ping when it hits. I think the card is fine. I just think it's currently going to get outclassed by the fact that right now, I think you do want to back up with the job cadet. So that's my two cents on no, it. No, that's actually a very fair point. And I would I would concede that, that, um, that getting those consistent backups, uh, especially in a tribal deck, can be so important. So uh, that's a very good point. All right. Next we have in Firewind, Lednar. Lednar is job Bisk Martyr? Bisk Matter? I've never played Tactics Advanced, so if somebody knows how to say that, Bisk Maker. He's a soup maker. It's, oh, okay. It's just spelled with a T, huh? No, I'm just, I'm, right, just yeah, right, yeah. I'm totally <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I know. Okay. So Lednar is a three cost, 8,000 power forward from Tactics Advanced. When Lednar enters the field due to your cast, place one fortune counter on Lednar. If a fortune counter is placed on Lednar, Lednar, Lednar cannot be broken. He has an action ability, discard two cards, remove all fortune counters from Lednar. Each player can use this ability. When I first read this card, I liked it a lot. Every time I've read it since then, as I've thought about it, I've liked it less and less and less. So, I, you know, I'm just going to make the comparison to Arden because Arden is another four that can't be broken. And I've seen how much he struggled because he has a similar thing where your opponent can decide when they want to turn Arden invisible and make it so he can't block. Just like with Lednar, your opponent gets to decide when they want to discard and remove the fortune counters. And right now, since there's nothing to add counters back to a forward, unless you flicker this guy, well, no, that doesn't even matter because he has to come in off a cast. So there's no way to get a fortune counter back on this guy. So once it's off, he's done. And unlike Arden, who was brave, so he always at least demanded you have to do something about him. If this guy swings in and dulls, you just go over the top of him. And then, of course, he still will suffer all the other things that Camp Broken people have, which is, you know, Famfred, Veritas, uh, removed from the game, all those things. So uh, while I did like him a lot, when because anything that says can't be broken, you're like, whoa, that's great. But the more I look at him and again, kind of comparing him to Arden, and I know how much Arden struggled. And this guy just seems like an even less version of that. So I got to admit, not a big fan of this guy and then he can't even be cheated in with like phoenix or anything because that doesn't give him his counter so whoops yeah but you know what he cares so much less than arden does about removal because he costs three cp true that so, is fair I, the biggest hang up i have with him is that he has ak power and that you know um there's going to be some decks where you can not be broken but that doesn't mean that you can't uh 
uh, get through like a bigger forward. However, you can leave him up to block infinitely, yeah. which is just so good. And to be able to play a 3 CP Arden, like I, I don't think that can be underrated against like an aggro deck uh, that maybe like throws their hand out and then um, you can play this and then they can't get through it and they'll have to draw two cards and pitch him right away to, to be able to even get through him. Like that's that's pretty neat. Although of course, you know, he can still be dulled. He can still be um, all those other things. Uh, the other thing is, is that discarding two cards is so much worse than breaking a character for Arden. Yeah. Like, way, way worse. And, again, you can get into a position where you don't have two cards to pitch. So, yeah. I think that's why he's a legend. But I, I don't know, like, I'll have to see him in play more. Uh, but I think that 8k is going to be tough, unless you boost him up. Uh, but I like, I like him as a blocker. As is the theme with the set. When you just said he was a legend, I was like, he is? Oh, look I at know. that, he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. no, the legends in the set do not seem like legends. All right, next up, we've got Hope, uh, who is a 3 CP AK forward, category 13, uh, job observer. When an active character opponent controls becomes dull due to your summons or abilities, freeze it. Uh, and when a dull character you control becomes active due to your summons or abilities, choose up to two characters you control, activate them. This effect will only trigger once per turn. So that's the second effect that only triggers once per turn. The first effect can trigger more than once. So it turns all of your dolls into dull freezes and it turns into all, all of your activated effects into triple activated effects. Uh, so it's like a multiplier thingy and it's kind of cool um, and it's also a 3 CPA case so uh, definitely very strong in that it gives you a lot of value uh, it's just keeping them around to do so and then finding the space uh, because whenever you have cards like this that combo together um, they don't really gain you any value right away so you have to make sure that you capitalize on it or you're you're not getting you know really anything from it for a little while and it's hard to stay relevant in a game when you haven't got an effect from it so you better follow up with it uh to make sure that you <laughs> you can take full advantage of this especially with like a lot of the activate effects activate everything or a lot of things then you might just be like crap i have two extra activates but i can't use them uh and that could be kind of tricky so um definitely plan for it but very very cool card i think it's strong He's neat. Um, I almost wondered if I should put him in over Barrel Eye in my Snow Cabo's deck, but the th like because because again that idea is neat that Snow you attack Snow dulls something and now it freezes it as well. That seems really strong. But also the Barrel Eye, he just outright kills him because I use the No No to reactivate. So I'm like, well, that's better. If there's some way to re see this is I don't know this might be one to watch in the future because if there is a way to just dull your opponent's backups reliably then this guy's going to freeze him. However, currently anything that would dull your opponent's backups also does freeze them already. So I don't know. Yeah, he's interesting. I do like him. I don't know if he's going to overtake Barrel Eye for that like wind ice kind of shenanigan slot that he's got, but he'll be one to watch for sure. I think there is, um, there's like an Opus 2 Bard or something. It's a 2 CP ice backup. When he mm -hmm. enters the field, dull all, all of your opponent's backups interesting so if you okay, can so have hope out and then play this backup you could do a full dull freeze for two cp and wow, play a backup that'd be pretty cool which is pretty <laughs> neat and, and the other thing with this card is that yes you're playing an ice wind deck but you're probably not playing like are you going to be able to dull consistently or are you going to be able yeah. to activate consistently i don't think you'll be able to do both so you'll have to pick or choose like i don't if if one of them is your game plan like you you can't fit a bunch of activation cards and a bunch of dull cards into your one deck uh, so definitely some, some choosing to be done there. Awesome. All right. Next, we're going to Final Fantasy III. It's Unai, and she has a parrot with her, um, Big Macaw. That's pretty cool. This is some awesome artwork. All right. So Unai is a five-cost, 8,000 power forward, Job Magus. And she reads, when Unai enters the field, choose two summons, each with a different cost in your break zone. Your opponent selects one summon among them. You may cast the other summon without paying the cost. If you cast it, remove that summon from the game after use instead of putting it in the break zone. Ooh, that was a mouthful. Now we've got her special, which is holy. So for one Unai, an ice and an earth, choose one dull forward. <laughs> Deal it 20,000 damage. Search for one summon and add it to your hand. I love that special. That's just so goofy and fun and so <laughs> over the top. You know, God forbid we ever get to a day like, oh, 20,000, that's nothing. That can barely kill anything. So hopefully that will always just be the standard. 
you know, this card is neat. There's a Doga card we're going to see later that tries to mess with summons. But man, anytime there's a card that lets my opponent get a choice, I don't like that. Like, I, I guess supposedly choose two summons each with a different cost. So you couldn't just pick two copies of the same summon. I mean, I guess you could try to get them into some like no win scenario. Like you want nine cost Bahamut or seven cost Phoenix, but, but you're still giving them a choice. They're still going to choose the thing that hurts them the least. So... I don't know. It's neat that it's not restricted by cost at all. Again, you could pick those really big ones and then cast them for free. But yeah, anytime I'm like giving my opponent an option, that always just kind of eh, bothers me. What do you think? I think it's awesome. If you put like a Bahamut and a Raiden uh, and a Phoenix, like it doesn't matter what they pick. They're all gonna they're all gonna do some damage. So <laughs> you just make sure there's no bad choices. Don't play any one CP summons. Uh, you have to build very specifically for this. It's a lot of work to get this going, uh, yeah. but it's and it's a like it's a big investment, um, but it's super cool and you're really just getting like probably a four CP discount on your Bahamut and you're getting to cast it again. Um, so I don't know. The special is kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> because this type of special is actually like not a great price point for, for CP mm -hmm. and you have to have another Unai, uh, but uh, it draw it searches you a card, uh, which is great. And then that card can be like put into the break zone and then you can play another one or something. Although you just played one and pitched one for her special. So you're probably not playing another one, but yeah, <laughs> the 20 K damage. First of all, that forward's a goner. Second of yep. all, that's going to kill Doga because we're going to see that when Doga gets his effect going, He's actually up in that that range of power, mm -hmm. so this kills a Doga. <laughs> I guess that's why they made it 20k. Yeah, <laughs> I think I literally think that's why. Okay, probably. Cool. Next up, we've got Delita, and this is such a cool little artwork with him, his little sword and little armor. You know, his kitty. All right, so this is an Ice Earth uh, dual element four, two CP, five K power, FFT job knight. When Delita enters the field, select one of the two of the following actions: choose one character you control, break it; choose one character of cost two or less in your break zone, uh, add it to your hand. Uh, so this could clear backups. This can kill things that you want to kill. Uh, technically, this works with the new Ovelia and that you want to break. Uh, FFT character so she can draw you a card or use Aegis. Uh, it technically it doesn't work with Ovelia because it's an ice earth card and Ovelia yeah. is water. Um, I do like the flexibility here because you can probably just bring back a two cost a lot of the time. And I'm sure there's going to be some like niche reasons to use this, uh, but I don't see it seeing this much play. Like I would honestly play the three CP Opus one delete a, a three CP nine K breakout character when it enters. If you really want to break a character, if that's really a game plan of yours. I would use that delete instead because then you're getting a three CP nine K that has a dope special and has the FFT artwork. I, uh, I was going to completely write this card off, but imagine my surprise when I saw it used several times this weekend. Oh, OK, there uh, you go people would use it in ice earth decks or there's a legend coming up we're going to talk about i'll talk about quite a bit but they would use it in this deck because it gets back a two cost character and this deck revolves around a lot of two cost characters so legit 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 delita would just hit the field boom i'm gonna pull that card right back and then go off so yeah i didn't really think much of them especially because like break your own characters like i don't want to do that um but after saying him i'm like oh okay i guess this guy's kind of little efficient engine isn't he yeah, and you know what? I actually did. I underrated that um, bringing back a character is quite strong in that he costs two CP. So yeah. if you dull, if you dull your backups, I mean, you have to dull an ice and yeah. earth backup for him. You put a card onto the field, you get a card back into your hand. That's actually very strong. Mm -hmm. So I, I take it back. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> I can already see it. Yeah. Okay, right, cool. Man. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. Sticking with Ice Earth, we have White Tiger Lassie Nimbus. Uh, this guy is a legend, and to me, he feels like a legend. Although the character is like, who is this? I played Type Zero. I don't remember this person. So he's a three cost, 9,000 power forward job Lassie. You can only pay with CP produced by backups to cast White Tiger Lassie Nimbus. He has Brave, and when he enters the field or attacks, choose one character opponent controls, dull it, and freeze it. Incredibly strong only three CP, big body, he's brave, he's never gonna dull, and then on entry and attack, which has been a theme this set, he's dull freezing anything he wants on the board. I saw him this weekend, he's just as strong as I thought he would be, he's fantastic. Ability-wise, this guy deserves legend status. Again, it's just character-wise, I'm like, I don't remember you at all from the game, hmm. so he's great. But the, the Lassie, like all these, like the White Tiger, all the names and stuff, it's because they're like the the warrior of their nation. Yeah, right? yeah, that's right. So I guess that like that part of it is legend status, just like him as an actual, re like remember him? Yeah. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, okay, next up we've got Gudon, uh, which is a member of the orders from FFBE. He is a Wind Earth Forward 4CP 9K. So nice over curve body there. He's brave, cannot become dull by your opponent's summons, and you can attack twice in one turn. Uh, so that's just like a really strong effect. Uh, the fact that he's basically Opus 1 guy, brave and cannot be dulled by your opponent's summons or abilities, and that he can attack twice. Uh, and then really, the I guess you just need to um, be able to swing over your opponent, which shouldn't be that too hard be too hard in uh wind earth considering you could even run like maria or something and then just be like a 10k swing twice so uh while he doesn't have any protection from removal uh he doesn't do anything bad he just needs a turn to get ready to go so definitely a very strong card Ugh, more earth wind i will be shocked if this guy doesn't make an impact uh i could even see him maybe replacing ishtola just to free up so people could go back to the Opus 5 Ishtola, uh, you know, swap Ishtolas out. And then because this guy now just has that big brave, crazy, yeah, guy, eat your heart out. So I'll spend the rest of it just asking. So uh, who is this guy? He's from Brave Exvius. I don't remember seeing him. He looks very strange with like his neck cannon and his cyber Yeah, he, he's from deal? season two. He shows up near the beginning of season two uh, okay. and he, he can fire these balls, this ball like out of his little chair there. Uh, and he, <laughs> he takes on like Laswell and the gang um, and he doesn't. He, he can take them all out and then another guy come like that's actually Axtar that comes and helps them out and Axtar beats oh, okay. them up. So it's kind of like the introduction to, hey, Axtar is actually pretty strong. Um, like this mercenary that it was just kind of hanging out because <laughs> we're like, who the gotcha. heck is this bum? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, uh, I won't say any more really, but Fair enough. I, he's not my favorite character. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next we have Kunshira, uh, also from Brave Exvius. This is another one you'll have to explain. Job Warrior. This is a two cost, 9,000 power forward. Some really pretty artwork here. So Kunshira has haste. If you control four or more backups, Kunshira loses 3,000 power. She has a special called Tempest Spellblade, uh, which is a one special, a wind, and a lightning. Activate Kunshira. Until the end of the turn, all the forwards opponent controls lose 4,000 power and Kunshira gains first strike and Kunshira can attack once more this turn. Some people thought this card was really crazy. I'll be totally upfront. This is not my style of card. I want to go to as many backups as I can. That's the type of player I am. So this card would always lose 3,000 power. So that's not appealing to me at all. Um, also, I don't find the special, like, I find the special weird because some people have compared it to Shoal because, you know, Shoal makes them all lose 2,000 power. It's so much more expensive. Yeah, it's one, it's more expensive. Two, like, do you use this on your opponent's turn or your turn? You would think you'd want to use it on your turn, right? Because it says she'll activate she'll get first strike and she can attack again so if you're using it on their turn yes you're getting a big power reduction but then she doesn't get that i feel like you would want to get that second attack so i don't know i just find the special to be kind of strange if someone out there makes this card work power to you i could see this being really cool in an aggro deck i'm just not an aggro player so it doesn't appeal to me what do you think yeah i think it's more like this a two cp haste 9k is really good in an aggro deck and aggro decks can play from three backups or less uh reliably or that's what they aim to do if they're going to truly be aggressive and playing lots of forwards and in that kind of deck which is certainly uh lightning wind this could be really good i think the special uh, it takes up most of the card, but it's actually more of a bonus that you can use in a pinch. Um, in an aggro deck, some games it's going to be really hard to play two color backups, although you're going to have to too for this card. Yeah. You're going to have to. So that's it's actually very tricky. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's undoubtedly strong. 2 CP, haste, 9K is great. So, uh, and then Kunchira is kind of, it's kind of weird. Kunchira, and I haven't finished um all of ffpe story so i don't know if she comes back later but she's actually more of like a peaceful uh political advisor oh really um, not a warrior <laughs> and uh and not a fighter uh and more and she she's actually so, and so that's what i'm wondering is so there's something because she is a unit later so i'm wondering if there's more story that i haven't seen but the kunshira that i've seen literally lets herself get beat up because she's a pacifist so clearly something goes down what the heck Right, yeah, that's that's not what I would have guessed from looking at this card. I know. So next up is Golbez, uh, a Wind Lightning Legend card, uh, 5 CP, 9K, EX Burst, So uh, and Job uh, Warlock from Category 4. 
EX Burst, when Golbez enters the field, you may search for one card of cost two and add it to your hand. Damage six, when Golbez enters the field, you may search for up to three cards of cost two and add them to your hand. And then you may play as any any number of Job Arc Fiend uh, from your hand at, onto the field as you want. Uh, that's a really strong effect at damage six, but man, is it hard to play a card at, at damage six and search your deck for up to three cards and play them. It's so cool though that they did give this guy search for a card of cost two and add it to your hand and not like search for an arc fiend. Um, they were nice about that. So that's really nice that you, this could be played literally in a deck that plays a lot of two CP forwards and uh, you know, maybe have some sort of super, I mean, but then even then I don't think you'd use it for the damage six. I'm having a hard time figuring this guy out because all of the arc fiends just straight up work with the Opus 1 Golbez, and I think a lot well, of people are going to try that. Maybe I could shed some light on it for you, because I got to test this this weekend, and my buddy Stephen Riley built a Golbez deck, shout out to him, and we got to test it a few times. So first of all, here's everything I love about this card. Ignoring the damage 6, his first effect is just great. Search for a card to cost 2, you can grab Cosmos or Chaos with this which you're going to want to if you're playing Archfiends. I put him in my Cadets deck just because Cadets are like Lightning, Wind, and Fire, and he's just in there as a one-of, as a burst to go get Cosmos. Like, he's awesome. So that part is great. Um, and the damage six, the way it's worded is actually so specifically well done. So here's what it does. So when if he enters at damage six, which we have gotten to do, I think two or three times, um, he actually, you get to search for four cards because you get his initial entry and then you get the three searches. And oh, if you notice, yeah. you don't have to search the f arch fiends. So even if you already have the arch fiends in hand, which happened a couple times, you just grab four random cards and then you still play out those arch fiends. So it's worded perfectly that whether you have to go fetch them or you already have them in hand, you're going to get to play them. Fantastic. I think everything about this card is great. It's fun. It's exciting. That being said, Archfiends in general are still just kind of strange because they're in four colors. And what's really weird is that Golbez is lightning. None of the Archfiends are lightning. So if you're doing an Archfiend deck, you're doing five colors at minimum. And we haven't cracked the code yet. So if anyone out there has cracked the code on Archfiends, let me know because we're still kind of having issues get color locked and everything else. Um, it is really fun and satisfying when you can do it. And again, I think he's good enough on his own if you're playing Wind Lightning or anything that, hey, here's a burst. Let me just go grab, you know, whatever two cost card I want. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited for him. I hope we can get him to work because otherwise he might end up being a disappointment and you might want to go with that other Opus Golbez, like you said. Yeah, if you're going specifically for um, for the Archfiends. Uh, but that is a really good point about searching something like a Cosmos or a Chaos out. And that's uh, that's pretty neat. Uh, okay, what do we have next? All right, next we have Lightning. Lightning is a two cost, 5,000 power forward, job savior, category 13, of course. And this is our uh, box art. This is the cover for Opus 13. So when Lightning enters the field, select one of the two following actions. Search for a card named Odin and add it to your hand, or Lightning gains haste until the end of the turn. I'm a, I think this card's terrible. Like, I think this continues a trend of often cards that are cover art seem to not be very good. Like, her getting haste isn't, like, a bunch of the lightnings could get haste, but they were stronger. She's such a weak body. Searching an Odin's not bad. Like, I feel like that's the effect. But there's already so many other lightnings that do that. Like, the Opus 10 Legend Lightning. Are you really going to play a bunch of lightnings? Because that one doesn't have a special. So, I don't know. I just think this card's weird. I don't like it. But this goes... This doesn't go in the Odin deck, necessarily. Or, like, yeah. the light, the FF13 deck. This goes in the, the Wind Lightning Aggro deck. So, mm, okay. here's a card that searches your removal to push through to win the game. The game or... It's one of your hasters that helps you push damage uh, early on or whenever you have a chance to squeeze in a haste card. Uh, and like we said earlier with Delita, um, paying two CP from a backup to play a card into the, uh, into the field and then immediately getting a card back into your hand uh, and all you've lost is that backup CP, that feels real good. True. So uh, I think she just goes in a very specific deck and that um yeah if you can like if you're in a pinch and you need like here's a card that does two things for an aggro deck hastes and finds your yeah. your spot removal to win the game so uh i think it's i think it's good in that in the right deck i'll be on it a bit well done 
Okay, next up we've got Wall, uh, who is a two CP Earth Lightning Ford, uh, Job Warrior, category Mobius, 7k power. Uh, so Job Warrior is great, we can we can search that, we can power it up. Uh, the category Mobius Fords, other than Wall, you control gain 2000 power, that's going to work well with a Mobius le Legend that we'll see later. Uh, when Wall deals damage to your opponent, choose one category Mobius character in your break zone, add it to your hand. So I think this is really good in, in like a deck where you are doing a lot of dulling and swinging and getting through and just getting a lot of value because he is not going to be able to do that on his own. He's just a 7k um, and yes, he's an anthem, uh, but he, I think he needs a lot of support to make that work and you need to play a lot of Mobius characters to be able to bring them back so you can get value out of uh, playing him. So that's gonna be kind of tricky and he does clash with some of the best Mobius characters around. Um, We'll see if, if he just sees play with the um, with the legend from this set, uh, or if you know there is like an actual um, full on Mobius deck that really focuses on on uh, his effect. Yeah, fun card for title. Again, this is another card I might have written off had I not experienced Octagon this weekend, but I saw this guy in this legend that we're going to be talking about, mm -hmm. and he was just a beast in there just for existing. He's like one of those cards that like, yeah, you're, you're fine if he just sits there. I just want him to exist on the board. So again, one I might have written off beforehand, but after seeing him action, I'm like, all right, well, I can yeah. see the potential. So, But everything else he said is dead on. Without that legend, he wouldn't have seen play, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like someone right. would have tried him with Maya and some dull stuff, and like, but no. All right, speaking of that legend, she's about to make her appearance. So first we have to talk with Sarah Mobius. This is a two cost, 5,000 power card, job princess, uh, category Mobius. When she enters the field, select one of the following two actions. You may choose a forward you control and one forward opponent controls. Uh, each forward deals damage equal to its power to the other, or you may draw one card. Another card that I would have looked at differently before this weekend. Card's incredible. Incredible. It's cheap. Wait, you thought this card was bad? No, I never thought it was bad. I just looked okay. at it differently. No, okay. I, it was one of those I just hadn't really, like, when I read yeah. it the first time, I was like, okay, moving on. Like, but I hadn't really thought about how it could be used. No, trust me. I never thought it was bad. Because at its worst, it's a body that draws you a card back. Which is so weird, too, because there's so many water cards that they draw you a card and then they make you discard. She doesn't have the discard. She just lets you keep it. That's crazy. She's a princess, so she can be searched out by Sarah. And then the Hecaton, the Hecaton Kyra effect is incredibly strong because you'll have Ovalia or some other big body out. She comes in and says, hey, these two fight each other. And then, you know, your forward's going to win because, of course, you're going to pick it when it's beneficial for you. No, she's fantastic. Her art is really great, too. I love it. It's kind of a shame. If this one's a full art, it's going to look great because she's got, like, this pose where her legs are back and she's shooting the arrow. Yeah, this card's fantastic. Yeah, this card is maybe even my favorite. The card that I'm most excited for in the entire set. Um, nice. One, one, I love Mobius. And I liked Sarah and Mobius, uh, but two, I love the fight effects in this game and having a fight effect on a forward that costs two CP is really, really strong uh, because when you cast a Hecaton on Kier, uh, it's gone. It's in the break zone. This stays in the field and it can be uh, an attacker. Uh, and then in the f in, in the instance where you're like, oh, well, I can't use Hecaton because none of my forwards are set up, and then just draw a card and cycle. It's good for that too. So I uh, love this card. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now we got Sophie. Uh, so, uh, Sophie is a 2 CP water, earth, multi element card, 4K power job, Mo or sorry, category Mobius job, monk. Monk is uh, a super awesome job to have lots of monk support now. And uh, she has the text. For each Earth Ford other than Sophie you control, Sophie uh, gains 2k power. For each Water Ford other than Sophie you control, Sophie gains 2k power. At the end of each of your turns, if Sophie has 1k power or more, draw one card and Sophie... Huh, sorry? You said 1k, it's 10,000. Oh, sorry, I thought I said 10k. My bad. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, 10k power. Uh, or more, draw one card and Sophie deals your opponent one point of damage. So if you have that other wall, he gives 4k total. So then you just need one other forward to get to that 10k. Uh, otherwise, you would need three forwards to get to the 10k or maybe some some sort of mix of, of anthems or, or something else. And then of course your opponent can interact with that. So uh, on its own, having three other forwards plus this is kind of tricky to do uh, but because we have so many ways to interact with this card i don't think it's that tricky and obviously from the way that travis is grinning he saw it this weekend and it did a lot of damage so tell us about that experience 
Oh, I saw it this weekend. This is the only thing I saw this weekend. And I played a lot of games and I watched my buddy play. This was everywhere. Every single person was running a Sophie deck. Because, so think of the card Necron that we got from Opus 12. You know, if you had all these dark characters and this big convoluted thing, you could deal your opponent one point of damage. Okay, throw all that out the window. That's the really lame way of doing it. This card is incredibly easy to get to succeed. And not only does it deal them damage, you draw a card and you have this massive body sitting here because she gets buffed by both earth and water. So if you put the Ceramobius on the field, she's already 8,000 power from just that one forward. You add any other forward, she gets to 10,000. It was so easy for people to just spam this. And it what cards that made a resurgence was Lena from Opus 3, which plays a water character of two cost or less to the field for free. So people, Sophie, Lena, here comes the Sophie. Here comes the, you know, uh, Sarah Mobius. Boom, Sophie now 10K Hecaton Kyers, one of your forwards. It was brutal and it was everywhere. It very much could be the meta for this Opus because every single opponent I was playing was running this card. So I'm already like trying to tech stuff to get rid of it. It's crazy strong. It's super easy to get online. I promise you that it's super consistent. Cards insane. And I'm, I'm just baffled that one opus after necron they're like all right well that was the garbage way of doing it here's this super easy way which is more rewarding cards nuts yeah but one was a like a common or a rare or something and this is a legend True. so this is a legend i yeah. don't think they're that comparable um so wait so sarah mobius counts as a water and an earth forward for this yep that doesn't i have to think about that more intuitively that doesn't make sense to me because it's just one forward like one one forward should only be able to give one effect well, and that's what when I first read this, that's yeah. what I thought the case okay, was. Okay, so, so that, was that's even better. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, literally, that's with huge. that one forward, or if again they have anything, so that wall, if that wall is on the field with Sophie, she gets 6,000 power from it because she gets well, the anthem buff, the fact that it's Earth. Well, she won't get the lightning, so she'll get 4,000. Yeah. But still. Yeah. It's so, just so yeah, easy. Which was tricky, right? To get that, to get three different colors, that's a little yeah. more tricky. So that's, that's a little tougher to do. So I'm wondering if my best friend. One of my favorite cards of all time, Shadow Lord Opus 4 Legend, if he's going to make a comeback. With all of these two CP forwards coming into play, he's going to be awesome. So if you don't know, uh, Shadow Lord, uh, when he enters the field, break all uh, two CP forwards your opponent controls. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when a opponent, a forward your opponent controls goes to the break zone, you can deal like 2k or something to a forward. Uh, so he can just like break a bunch of forwards and then ping. Um, yeah. He was a Golbez counter. It's it's so that could be actually be a really good tech card. Uh, and then other things like Zalbag, uh, three CP lightning forward, break a two cost forward on on uh, entry. Uh, it could be re some really good tech to just wipe people's uh, you know Sophie's out or something. So we'll see. If anyone plays it, I use the monster metal Gemini against it to crush it. It was very satisfying. Oh, nice! That's awesome. Uh, okay, was this? I, I've forgotten now. This was. Uh, oh, um, this one was me. Oh yeah, you did Sophie, so I'm up next. Okay, awesome. Oh, and I'll just mention Sophie is a protagonist uh, from uh, season uh, two of Mobius, and you actually get to play as her. Uh, her and Graf are the two new playable protagonists. They're both nice. pretty cool. Um, so yeah. Very cool. All right, next we're going back to Final Fantasy three. We have Doga. He's a six cost, 7,000 power forward job magus. For every three summons in your break zone, Doga gains 1,000 power. When Doga enters the field, draw one card for each summon you discarded to cast Doga. When Doga attacks, if you have nine or more summons in your break zone, you may cast one summon from your hand without paying the cost. I had a buddy who built this up. It was a super summon heavy deck. And you know what was interesting was like, he actually wasn't a bad turn one play because we legit put down Doga and he threw away three summons and then he just gets those three cards back. So if you can pitch a lot of summons for him, that's fantastic. His power is like, it's for every three summons. So you need what? Nine summons in there to get one is effect and then he'll beat a 10K. The card has potential written all over it. And it was fun to see. To this day, we've never really seen one of these just pure summon goofy decks ever really succeed. I don't know if Doga is going to be the thing that changes that, um, but he is fun to play and fun to be around. I can say that uh, from experience. So I'm, I'm curious to see where he goes. I definitely thought it was 1k power for every summon. So I thought, oh, if you have nine summons, that's 9k power. And that's where the Une is going to break them. Uh, I don't even think that would have been overpowered to have 1k per summon. Probably not. Uh, to be honest. 
uh, because he's just there's so many other ways to remove him. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, you just have to build quite around uh, much around him, and and then have a like having that many summons, it's gonna take a while for him to get uh, yeah. to get online. But um, definitely a good payoff. So uh, super fun card. Yep. Oh, and great oh. artwork of this art. Yeah. Okay, we've got Ramza. It's a lightning water. Um, uh, forward 7k uh, sorry 7 cost 9k power uh, FFT category if you control five or more category FFT characters the cost to cast Ramza is reduced by three so he can go down to a four cost when Ramza enters the field choose two forwards your opponent controls your opponent puts one of them in, into the break zone uh, and then returns the other to their hand so they get to pick uh, but yeah. the cool thing is, is that neither is breaking so it's it's that uh uh, that removal that won't trigger any, any break zone effects because they're putting it's a selection uh, and then the bounce. So if you have two targets and, and both of them are fine for bouncing, then this is a, a really neat effect. It's so powerful on a forward to get this level of effect. Um, I would argue that it's even worth it at 7k, although obviously you want to get this uh, to be um, down to three uh, down to 4k. Um, yeah. And there are lots of forwards that are fine to balance this set uh, because there's lots of strong forwards that don't have haste and need one turn to get going. For example, Gudon is a forward that needs to get put into your hand. Sophie is a forward that, yeah, they can just play her back, uh, but she can attack. She doesn't have haste. I, I think there's a lot of these f forwards. Uh, maybe that's what, what is so big about balance this set is that um, there's so many forwards that are obviously crazy, but they don't have ETBs necessarily, or they're not as, as you know crazy as like, you know, oh, he's got like a Nidhogg and a Sephiroth. Um, I can't play any balance or, you know. Uh, so, um, and then as for reducing the cost of this guy, well, there are quite a bit of FFT backups. So again, playing your backups uh, from your category is going to be a consistent way to get the cost down. So if you play an Ovelia backup, a, a Ducal Tana backup, and then one more FFT backup, uh, and then you could have like an FFT forward or something, like an Agrius. Well, then you play Ramza, you've got your five. Hopefully they don't interact with your board and, and you could actually do this. Uh, although, no, the paying the cost will be fine, right? Oh, no, he so he's right. He's not on the field. Okay, yeah. so you have to have that fifth. So you're probably going to have to play one of those Opus 1 or 2 FFT backups that are not so great, but would be good to have this guy on discount. To quote you in one of the comments on one of these other videos, you said, yeah, they did FF tactics dirty. Yeah. Like, if he wasn't named Ramza, I would like him a lot more, but we've already got good Ramzas, particularly the Lightning Legend from Opus 5 is still very good. And in particular, that Ramza is great in a Knights deck. So he's Knights. That's a lot of tactics characters, which again, a lot of them name clash. So in, in title would be great. I don't know about, you know, in normal. And the thing is too, something to keep in mind, they have to have two forwards on the field. So they, if they only have one forward on the field, you can't actually use that effect. You must have two targets because, and like I said earlier, then they are gonna get to pick. So even if you're you're ultimately taking two of them off the field, they still get to, okay, well, I'll pick this one to replay and I'll pick this one to break. And so, I don't know, he is a neat card. Like I actually, I actually do like this card. It's just, man, I wish he wasn't named Ramza. <laughs> yeah, in terms of uh, going into an FFT deck, I do think, you know, obviously that's that's just so devastating. Um, mm -hmm. But in terms of an, of an effect, I, I do think it's a pretty strong effect, um, especially in, in what this meta might be. Um, one thought I just had is that that old Opus 5 Ramza uh, would be pretty good in a Sophie deck because the cost yeah. would get so low and then you would just need to color fix and uh, you'd be able to pop them out with, with Sophie and go real crazy. Yeah. All right. All right. Next, we have the Aldore Emperor. A lot of brave Exvius love this set. He is a job emperor. He is a five cost, 9,000 power forward. When Aldore, enter, blah, blah, blah. when Aldore Emperor enters the field, select one of the three following actions. If you have received five points of damage or more, select up to two of the three following actions instead. Choose a forward, deal at 7,000 damage. Choose a forward of cost three or less, break it. Choose an active forward, deal at 8,000 damage. I put him in my cadets deck again to kind of just to help color fix because he's a dual card so i could pitch him for either and so far he feels he, he feels fine um he has some versatility with his effects again if there's active you can go for the higher amount if they've got a three cost you can just outright break it or if there's like a dull one you can hit it with the 7k so he does feel very versatile which i like and on damage five coming in it does feel really nice to get two of those so he's absolutely fine it's hard to ever picture yourself like building a deck around him but again in something like cadets 
or if you're already playing lightning fire i think he's a good fill-in card yeah it feels like you're really paying for the flexibility of his effect because yeah. at damage five it's really good but at dam at, at just choosing one of them it's not yeah. that good cost for effect at all all of those uh are actually three cp summon effects yeah you're getting a body on top of it um but uh, i think yeah like you said it, it just fits into that deck but it's not a card you're gonna build around I'm assuming this is another season two guy. Is he like the Emperor Baddie or something? Yeah, I won't say too much about him. There's a lot, a lot going on there, um, spoilers wise. But uh, okay, awesome. We've got nine, which is a six CP class zero cadet, nine K power, forward lightning, uh, fire, multi element uh, from type zero. So you can doll an active fire job class zero cadet or and one active lightning job class zero cadet forward um, instead of paying the CP cost to cast nine. So if you have two forwards. Uh, one one fire, one lightning, they're both class zero cadets. Uh, you can dull both of them to play him, and that's obviously like pretty powerful to play this big forward. Uh, and then when he enters the field or attacks, choose one forward your opponent controls until the end of the turn. It loses 2,000 power uh, for each class zero cadet you control. So if you have uh, a couple of backups and then you have the two forwards you used to cast him plus himself, you've got crazy amounts of, of power reduction and power reduction is a very strong effect. And then he's going to keep on doing that. So this is definitely a great finisher for class zero cadets. Um, and then it's an upgrade from previous nines uh in my opinion so i think this is a really neat card and i think maybe this is actually i know, I know you said okay well it's really good to have the backup count for that cater uh but then cater is also now another four that can account for this effect so that's also really uh important i think too to be able to um have lots of different class zero cadet forwards and especially ones that that you know she's a 5k forward and there's some other ones that will just maybe not be able to get through and then might as well use them to to get this guy in yeah uh card is awesome i got to test it this week and i built a cadets deck and man so first of all his, his his entry and attack effect it just feels so strong again because it counts backups like if it just counted forwards it'd be really rough count a bunch of backups i mean it was routinely doing 8,000, 10,000, 12,000 power reduction and it's on entry and it's anytime he attacks and i didn't honestly think much of that first effect to the free cost until i saw someone use it in a match and here's what they do they put out a fire forward like the new sink and then they put out a lightning forward you know cease jack whoever and then those can't attack anyway instantly dull them here comes nine. Oh yeah Boom, okay. like 10 i was just like holy cow like if they can already attack, it's less appealing because, again, you want them to go in and attack. But that, hey, they just came out this turn. They can't attack anyway. I'll just dull them. Here comes nine. Boom. You've just lost it for like it was just this explosion of power. That was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, he's fantastic. Great card. We'll see if he can pull cadets into a, a winning place. Glad to hear it. All right. Next, we have Noel. Noel is a job shadow hunter from Final Fantasy 13. He is a 2000 or a 5000 power forward two cost. When Noel enters the field, select one of the two following actions. Choose one forward other than Noel you control until the end of the turn. It gains 2000 power in haste. Choose up to two forwards, deal them 2000 damage and dull them. This card's actually really good. I saw oh, someone yeah. use it with uh, Behemoth King this weekend. They had the Behemoth King, and then Noel came down, gave it haste and 2k right away. I was like, uh-oh, that's not good. You know, I'm taking two damage now. Um, and then the other effect, too, I don't know if the 2,000 damage will ever be relevant, but it's just nice that it's there, because normally you would think it's just dull them, but dulling two forwards, like, and he's so cheap. So he could be, he's an early game to give, again, your Behemoth King or something powerful haste, or he's a great finisher in the late game. Surprise, two of your blockers are now gone. Like, I think he's really good. Oh, yeah. Like, people have used so many cards. Like, remember the, the old Opus 3 Shiva, dull two forwards? Yeah. Uh, there's... Um, things that dull freeze two forwards like orphan or whatever it is there's so many there's so many cards that that you would use this effect and it's just it's just one of two effects on this forward uh and then the 2k damage to two that could actually be relevant for trading up pings or for activating break a damaged forward and it's just it's like you don't even it's like it has three effects almost yeah um, and then obviously being able to give something haste is a really big deal um and and they can put this on uh, a multi-element forward because some of the cards you want to give haste are in different elements and then if you want to give like a like a wind card haste all of a sudden you got to mess with you know a third element or if you want to give another multi-element card haste then you got to mess with three to four elements so um they 
that is something to keep in mind that like within these colors like this is this is a little more tame than if it was on just one yeah. color so it's good uh it's good game balance nice to see noel get a good card too because man he's always struggled to get good cards for some reason <laughs> Uh, okay, next up we've got uh, Yuzuki, which is a 3 CP water fire forward 7k power job warrior. Lots of job warriors this set, type yeah. 0. Um, if a fire forward you control is dealt damage by your opponent's abilities, the damage becomes 0 instead. That's pretty cool. And then if a water forward you control is dealt damage, reduce that damage by 2000 instead. Uh, a little less cool, but still good. Um, but I just don't know if this is good enough to see play because... <sighs> Like it's it's just so I mean she gets both effects which is cool right she is a fire and a water forward so she's pretty protected um, from abilities which means she could stick around but then she breaks to everything else and breaks to uh, right. to combat and stuff so uh, hard to fit into a deck. I thought she'd be nuts when I first read her, but even testing her this weekend, like there's some situations she's great and other situations they just completely get around it because they're mm. not doing like damage based stuff. So yeah, I think so. Just depend on the matchup. All right. Next we have, <laughs> this will be quick, Ultimecia, two cost, 5,000 power, job witch, uh, eight to City of Final Fantasy. When an Ultimecia enters the field, select one of the two following actions. Your opponent discards a card from their hand or choose a character you control, return it to its owner's hand. Card's absolute garbage. Can't stand it. I don't think either of the effects are very good. Really? Yeah, I don't like, like this at all. The whole, the whole thing about like water ice as, a, as an archetype is like the vi old Vice Kings archetype where you're what you want to do is you know play these cheap forwards and also make people discard it's this is kind of like the draw card effect where it's a straight you know draw card is good because you can just do that and, and gain advantage and oftentimes you can just make someone discard and, and that's that's fine so it's not it's not a bad thing but then if you're actually building this around um a water ice deck then being able to return a character to your hand you know what if you return like a renoa and then go and uh, flicker your nidhog or like this enables all of your return to hand combos in vice kings um which did have some so uh i think it's like a pretty good tech piece if you're building around it um and it just it's so nice that it has that uh neutral effect to just get out there if you if you're not ready for it yeah, I don't like it much, but I'd be happy to be proved wrong. Somebody show me the the light on this one. Yeah, well, I don't know. It's just not garbage. Like it's it's a it's a strong effect on a like it's those are two good effects, and it gets both of them. Like you gotta if you're that's your meter for garbage, then that's that's um putting a lot of cards in in the garbage tier. Well, I've played a lot of ice this weekend, and discard felt really weak. So I guess I don't feel like it has the value it used to. But like mm -hmm. I said, somebody show me the light because I I want to see it. All right, uh, moving on. Next we have, uh, this is you. Oh, right, this is odd. Okay, uh, so, sorry, I just can't keep track of it. Um, this is Chime, which is a 4 CP, water, ice, forward, AK power, FFCC, and job minister. When Chime enters the field, choose two forwards, your opponent controls, return the first forward to its owner's hand, and then Dolph freeze the other. So this is, you get to pick, which is nice, yeah. unlike Ramza, but Dolph freeze is weaker than remove from game. So, uh, same, same type of thing in that it's a strong effect on a forward and this one's 4 CP Ramza you had to do a lot to reduce to, to get to, to be 4 CP um, but the fact that um, that bouncing is probably going to be stronger this set I think that this is pretty strong um, yeah that, that's kind of all <laughs> I love the sweet playing card art. It looks great on all of these. And similar to Ramza, it's a little unfortunate. I tried it this weekend, and there were times like they just didn't have two forwards, so I actually couldn't pick both tar pick the targets. So that's unfortunate. But otherwise, yeah, she seems fine. How many, you tried like every card this weekend? I, I did. I tried a lot. <laughs> how many how many decks did you build? Uh, gosh, I want to say about six or seven. Six or seven. Okay, and like, okay. Because I mean, like, how many games can you reliably get in with each of those decks? Uh, not a lot. Yeah, don't get me yeah. wrong. This is by far. This is not an expert opinion. This is just my like first and weekend what, reaction. And just for the for the viewers, what was last weekend? Uh, so last weekend, this was the weekend of March twenty seventh and eighth. So when when Opus thirteen officially released, like uh, on Octagon. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. So there wasn't a specific tournament. It was just that. Hey, Correct. it's out. Yeah. It was just everyone was play testing, doing like yeah. free play. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah. Let's go on to the next one. 
Uh, so next we have someone who did make an impact. This is Celestia. She's a four cost, 9,000 power forward, type zero. Another job warrior. Man, I really like that job this set. The water characters you control cannot be broken by opposing summons or abilities that don't deal damage. When an ice character you control is chosen by your opponent's summons or abilities, choose up to one character, dull it and freeze it. I use this in my uh, water ice kind of bouncy deck that I use with Chime and Sid Randall and all these things. And she's a pain in the butt. She's a real pain in the butt because anytime they choose not just her, anything on your field, if it's got ice on it, you're getting a dull freeze off on anything on their board. That's crazy. And then the water, if you have water backups, they can't be broken. They're completely protected. And any of your water forwards, I think I was playing Dragoons at one point and someone brought this down against me. I was like, oh, crap, I can't break any of their guys now. <laughs> like, she's a huge pain in the ass. I thought she'd be great. And at least so far, she's really good. Yeah. And again, she counts as both of those characters uh so she can't be broken by uh, summons or abilities and if she gets targeted then um yeah you're gonna dull and free something so just super strong uh effect that uh yeah it doesn't do anything the turn it comes in but it's gonna stick around and and, and uh make things difficult for your opponent so uh very another cool. worthy leg another worthy legend uh the type zero seemed to be, be able to get the good legends this set. yeah that's awesome Okay, next up, we're going over to the starter cards, and this is Innocence, uh, which is a 4 CP 9K forward, uh, category 14, job with Light Warden, and he's got Brave, so a Brave 9K, uh, love it. Uh, you know, the dark, dark cards always got that 1K power boost, mm -hmm. and Light didn't necessarily always get that, uh, but we got it this time, so there you go. So if you have a card name Innocence in your break zone, uh, then Innocence gains. Uh, choose uh, one Fire, Doll, choose one Forward, deal it 10K, damage that's pretty strong and then uh, also uh, ice doll uh, your opponent discards two cards in the hand and you can only use this ability during your turn and only once per turn um, so that is the actual the, that's the ice one that you can only use once per turn uh, if you were doing some shenanigans you could do the fire one multiple times but because it has brave it means you can attack and then in afterwards use either of these effects so this is pretty cool and I'm gonna leave it to you because I'm assuming you tried this in fire ice I did my again i gotta give a shout out to stephen riley he built a fire ice deck his moment it's the moment the starter sets came out i like this card quite a bit i've heard some people just completely dismiss this because they're like well it's light so you can't pitch it for cp so how do you get together innocence in the break zone well several ways either you just let the first one die or my buddy built a deck around the backup meath which lets you discard a card and then go search for a forward of the same cost so you could literally discard your first innocence and go grab the second one or he plays the emperor ice backup which lets you discard two cards to break a doll forward he had no trouble whatsoever getting him into the break zone now sometimes i was able to deal with innocence pretty quickly and he really wasn't a big deal but if he got going like when he just starts junking your hand or blowing up one of your forwards every turn he can be a real pain and because he has that brave doll he's always going to attack and then he can on the stack do it so again i, I think he's honestly just a fine card i think he's really strong when he gets going yes he's kind of got some troubles getting going but yeah i, I think he's good We've got one more like obligatory. This card doesn't have haste. This card needs setup. Yeah. Uh, this card is weak to bounce and weak to removal in that like uh, it doesn't do anything the turn it comes in. Um, but man, are those effects just just yeah. super strong. Like uh, so really like this card. Uh, it's super awesome. All right. And last but certainly not least, our final card of the Opus and the final light card. Got three light cards a set, and it is the Oracle of Light. She is Job Oracle of Light, a three cost, 5,000 power forward from category 14. Uh, she's also known as Reen in the game. So if you hear me refer to Reen, I am talking about the Oracle of Light. So she reads The Job Scion of the Seventh Dawn Forwards You Control gain 2,000 power. When the Oracle of Light is put from the field into the break zone, you may remove the Oracle of Light from the game. When you do so, choose one job, Scion of the Seventh Dawn, in your break zone, play it onto the field dull. Cards incredible. Scions has wanted a dedicated, like, light or dark card for so long, and we got one, and she's amazing. She bumps up Papalimo and Urianje. She makes Eda stronger, Ishtola, Thancred. She just powers everybody up, which is also very thematic in the game. And man, her, her effect, it's really funny watching people not want to kill this little forward because when she goes she can bring back any scion and that includes backups i have used this card oh did you break alice that's nice here she's back now or i've used it to minfilia 
Minfilia will break a forward like as Oracle of Light dies, and then I'll bring the Minfilia back. She's fantastic in Scions. Fantastic. Absolutely love her. That's awesome. I don't really have anything to add other than um, just like like you often will lament, oh, they gave this card that we have a billion copies of yes. more copies. This is, it's not a Scion, but it's Scion support with a new name. And that's just, you know, very nice to see that kind of thing coming in. So I was so very... worried they were going to tie this to Minfilia because she's kind of loosely tied to her. Yes. Story. Yeah, I know. I would have been so... worried about that, that too. Um, yeah. And I'm Thank very glad to see that they did not. So that's it for the Opus 13 set review. You made it through. Uh, congratulations to you. Thank you for watching. Uh, when we talk about these light, dark, and multi-element cards, I want to say overall that the, the multi-element cards, I think they're all like a boosted a little power from previous multi-element cards. I think that there's less multi-element fodder than in previous sets. I think some of the rares yeah. uh, and, and commons are stronger than in previous sets. Uh, and it seems like these a lot of these cards uh according to the, the testing weekend that we just had uh, are becoming like pretty neat cornerstones of a lot of decks out there so let's hope that that keeps up and they uh they don't fade compared to old staples absolutely absolutely yeah it was cool to see them mix up the color element combinations a bit more this time too whereas last time they just did it like in alpha or in library order so it was neat to see all the different combinations this time mm -hmm. uh so now you're wondering, I've got all this information, what do I do next? Well, uh, you got to go over to Travis uh, Travis Pfeiffer's uh, YouTube channel to get lots uh, more content. Even today, he released an interview with Kyle Peters, uh, who's more than a good player. He's a great player, and uh, that's a really good piece of content there. But he's going to be uploading all sorts of stuff uh, for this opus. And I'm just curious, like, or what's the first deck tech that you're going to make? Um... I've been trying to make this Sid Randall water bounce thing work, and it's a little tricky. So if I'm feeling ambitious, I'll go with either Sid Randall or Golbez. Otherwise, I'll probably do Cadets. That's probably a little easier, safer. Unfortunately, we don't get the cards physically until near the end of April here in America. But once we do, I will start putting out deck techs. So look forward to those on my channel. And absolutely, before we go, I wanted to say major thank you to Alex of Mastidia Gaming. I look forward to these so much. I have such a great time doing these with him. And for anyone who has seen my channel, I have a cool little intro where it says Travis Pfeiffer FFTCG, TCG. And it's got this beautiful music. Alex is the one who made that. And he has some of the best looking content and the slickest card content I've ever seen. And he's always striving to get better and improve. So absolutely watch his stuff if you haven't because he's part of the reason my stuff looks so good and he's part of the reason i was inspired to do a lot of this in the first place so alex you have my Aww. humblest thank you thanks yeah and thank you so much for joining me it's always always fun to do these with you one bone to pick uh you said that we don't get the cards until the end of april in america make that north america canada ain't That's getting true. cards either sorry sorry my yeah. bad yeah na uh, na yeah <laughs> yeah and uh you know what uh i'm sure that uh you know there's there's actually a, a player base in, in mexico as well they're not getting any cards we're all yeah. getting uh thrown under the bus so hopefully we can get some cards soon and uh get some jam some games um all right so that's gonna be it and uh hopefully we'll get together for some more videos otherwise uh everybody thanks for watching and we'll uh see you again thank you so much bye bye